Welcome to our final lesson about the chess pieces. Today we're going to learn about the hardest piece, the knight. We call him the tricky knight because he moves a little bit different from all the other pieces. He doesn't move in a straight line and the knight, unlike any of the pieces, can jump. At the beginning of the game, the knight is the only piece that can get out without a pawn move. The knight can be the hardest piece for a child to learn to see and move on the board. And so we're going to discuss a variety of ways to think about the knight move. Now the thing about the knight is it moves in this shape. It is not a straight line. Some people say it moves in an L shape, but the problem with just saying an L shape is that the knight can move in any direction. He can move forwards, he can move backwards, he can move side to side. So when he does that, the shape changes. Sometimes it looks like a bed, sometimes it looks like a seven, sometimes it looks like an L. And so what I tell kids is the knight has a very distinct personality. That he doesn't want to move like the other pieces. He wants to move like his shape. If you notice the head of the knight and down, that's the shape that the knight moves in. He always turns a corner. So he can move up and turn a corner. He can move down and turn a corner. There are a variety of ways of thinking about that. Sometimes we say, one, two, turn a corner. And I'm going to mark this with a pawn. So he can move one, two, turn a corner. One, two, turn a corner. I also say that the knight is worth three points. So the knight always moves three squares, not counting the square he's on. So you go one, two, three, and he moves here. One, two, three, and he can move here. The other thing you can tell your child is the, ch the, the knight will make the sound of a horse when he moves. He can go clip, clip, clop. He can go here. He can go clip, clip, clop. And he can go here. Clip, clip, clop. Here or clip, clip, clop. He can go in all those directions. The other thing that's helpful is notice in the center of the board, the knight has eight squares that he can go onto, and it forms a circle around the knight. You will have seen for Halloween, we made spider costumes for the knight because he can go to eight squares, so he has eight legs just like a spider does. But notice that these pawns are all on a different color. When the knight starts on a dark square, he will always end up on a light square. If he starts on a light square, clip, clip, clop, he will end on a dark square. And that is how you know how the knight moves. Now, the knight is allowed to jump pieces, but this is not checkers. So when the knight jumps, clip, clip, clop, he only captures on the square that he finally lands on. He does not capture a square he is passing through. So when he jumps over this pawn, he does not capture this pawn. He jumps over it and captures. Similarly, if the knight's own pieces are in the way, this rook is here, he can jump over his own piece and capture. But this move, this turning move is very hard for kids to see. One of the things that helps them is to visualize the circle around. And if you're looking at the circle around the knight, sometimes they want to move diagonally. They'll go one, two, three. That's on the same color. He has to go a little bit further out to land on a square of a different color. So you can talk about the knight moving in an L shape. You can talk about him moving um, three squares a turn. You can talk clip, clip, clop, one, two, three. Any of those ways are helpful for a child to learn the knight. The best way for your child to learn how the knight moves is to simply practice moving the knight a lot. And a game that helps the move of the knight a lot is a game called the knight tour, where you take the knight and you move the knight around an empty board. But the goal is to touch as many squares as possible, touching each square only once. 
It is possible, and you can look this up online, to have the knight touch every single square only once using a specific mathematical formula. But for your child, just see how many squares they can touch. You start by marking the square. I use pennies, sometimes I use M&Ms or chocolate kisses, it's candy, just a marker. Start there, clip, clip, clop. You put a marker on each square the knight moves to, and the knight can never return to that square. One, two, turn a corner. One, two, three. Clip, clip, clop. Now when you first start the game, it's very easy because the board is empty. But as the child moves the knight around on the board, the, the, the board will get much more crowded as each square becomes covered with pennies. But that's the good thing because a child will need to know how to find available squares for the knight on a crowded board. So it really helps them visualize how the knight can move on a crowded board. So have fun, see how many squares your child can touch, and have them come to chess club and tell me how many squares they got their knight to.